The spoils of the good life become painfully apparent when I speak with my brother. His beard down to here, his house a mess, his mind half what he used to be. Well, nothing's really changed, he coughs. I pretty much just hang out at home anyway, so... The line goes quiet, and I can't think of anything real to say. By now, the words regarding our lives have built up so much pressure that I fear what might pop out. There are so many words with sharp edges that they cut me inside. I don't want to cut my brother. So I speak on the surface. We finished our chicken coop and the gardens got tomatoes and carrots and, um... The guilt of my good life, the inequity of Western civilization, and my role as the unwilling oppressor bear down on me, ruining the fruits of my labor, turning them rotten on vines and in the dirt. Yeah, so comes my brother's ultimate non sequitur, signifying the spin within his head, his need to protect himself from shame. I haven't had a cigarette for two weeks. I can feel his humble smile from 350 miles away. I can feel him sitting alone in the sagging double-wide trailer of our youth, growing his hair, falling asleep in front of the TV at any and all hours. I rock in my soft deck chair, watching a blue heron take off from the pond below. I miss him more than anything and feel like crying. I miss the part of him that is now forever lost to the world of overdoses. The part of him that built up the little world in which he now resides, which now, in quarantine, seems to protect him in ways that the rest of us dream of. Well, I better get going, I say, pretending. All right, love you, man. Love you too. Our words bounce from the satellites and keep us afloat in the sea of signals.